Okay, so the last thing in the bag of tricks we're going to go over is being able to take this texture and this whole setup here and put a grime layer or something over the whole thing. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we have to realize is the easiest way to do it or um, is, is using channels. But Unity recently changed some of the things they did about channels. So it's important you understand that part. Um, first off, let me explain what channels are. Channels are the ability to unwrap an object several different ways. That way you can put a material on an object in several different ways. Um, meaning that it sits on, you can put three materials on the object and they all are on the same object but look differently and then you can layer them together. So let's start with that and we'll get back to what you did recently. So I have this object here that we have, we've seen these other Max. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a UV wrap on it and open up the editor. And right now, this is in channel, you can see right here channel one. We're gonna go over to channel two. And when you push this button, it comes up with this weird dialog. What it's asking is if you wanna move what you've already done or abandon what you've done and whatever's already in there, keep that. We're just gonna say abandon. And I already did this, so we'll just ignore that I already did this. So you're gonna take everything you have and move it off to the side. And what I do to get this done, I wanna unwrap this box, um, each side as the same thing, so I can use a grime layer that looks like, really ugly but this is what it looks like okay it's just this grime that comes down it doesn't show me the alpha but this is the alpha it's like. so it's just this grime layer okay so we're gonna take this grime layer and put it over the top of this box um, in here it's hard to see but I can show you we just have to switch back and forth between materials there's a way to do it but it's much more work than it's worth so what do I need to do I'm gonna go to the front viewport I'm gonna hide this now front viewport and I'm going to go into my selection set. I'm going to turn off the ignore back facing because I want to grab the whole thing just like that. And then I'm going to go to the top. And then from the top, I'm going to hold Alt. Is that I'm not exactly straight. I'm going to hold Alt and deselect everything that is this. Just to make sure the only thing I'm grabbing is the two sides at this point. Okay. We'll come back and do the other sides in a minute too. So the two sides, okay, and the sides are, if you look at this from XYZ, this is X up and down the Z and forward and back and forth. So we're gonna change our lightning bolt or planar map default to X, because it's the first one we're gonna work on. And we're gonna click that. And it automatically puts this in there. Let me show you what it did across here. It made a checkerboard across the whole surface of the object. Super simple for us, super easy, and it's perfectly aligned all the way through. Yes, if you look inside of here, there's some stretchy areas, but that's fine, we're talking about growing at this point, right? So again, I'm gonna come back in here, and I grab everything, and it's easy this way, I can just deselect those inside of there. And then I'll go back to top, and this time I will deselect all this stuff in here. Now, what I wanna do is push F2 to make sure I have all the interior faces that I want. Yeah, and you know, since that's the front of the box, I'm gonna go ahead and grab these, grab these as well, these edges. This to see. Yeah. Okay, so if you'll see it grab both those, that's fine. So we're just gonna do this, except I of course left it with X, we need to do this and then we're going to grab this one because that's the only one left it should just be top and bottom and we'll change this to z and now if i turn off the f2 and collapse it well you can see this is all evenly distributed across the faces here now here's where things get a little bit wonky okay max uses one two three and four but Unity, and I'm going to collapse this down so we have just one here. Unity uses 0, 1, 2, and 3. 
still four channels, they just start at zero and Max starts at one. So it gets a little confusing, but one of the things that Unity does, and it didn't used to do this, but what it's doing right now is that when you import your objects, to, and you do that one setting we've talked about, and we look at it, can we set this generate lighting or light map UVs? It used to be in the last few versions that the UVs would um, for these light maps, which we haven't much talked about, but trust me, it just uses one of the UV channels. By default, it goes to two, but if you had something in two, it would go to three, so forth and so on. Because there is up to eight channels you can have on an object. But for whatever reason in this version, when you import it in channel two, it actually overwrites it with this generate UV map. So we can't actually use channel two to do this grind layer, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead back in here, and I know it's confusing a little bit, and probably should have went to three, but I wanted to explain what I was doing and then show you. I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna go to one, I'll go to two, and I'm gonna say abandon, so I get to keep the UVs that I had in two, and we can check them right here, see? So I've done the UVs for two. Um, and then I'm gonna click on this again and go three and say move. And what we see now is three looks exactly like two, okay? So we know that two and three are exactly the same. If we collapse these down and we do this UV unwrap again and say open, you'll see it's totally different. It's back to the UV ones, okay? So we have one, two, and three being used. And two and three are the same. Then I'm doing that so I can show you what I'm talking about. This I'm gonna export this out. Go over tech crate, say yes. So I'm gonna come back in to Unity right here. And in Unity, you see nothing's changed. Didn't even affect it. There's no, no doubt, there's no changes. So what I'm gonna do real quick though is I'm gonna come to my materials in here. I'm gonna get rid of one more one. And um, I'm gonna come to this object, and instead of saying tech crate in here, which is the base material, I'm gonna put grime into that slot and see what we get. And we don't have any textures in it yet, so let me just grab the textures I have, which I'll, I'll give you to base map, and then um, we'll just throw them all. So obviously, it's not working very good. That's fine, it changes white so we can see it. Not working very great. We'll turn down the smoothness, we can just see the colors. But what we can do is change it oh, to UV0. That's what it looks like at UV0. Okay, that's the way it should look by default. UV0, it's not working very good, right? So what about if we go to UV1? Well, UV1 doesn't look like we unwrapped, but what about UV2, which remember is a UV3 inside of channel three inside of Max. And there it is. Okay, I don't have the opacity turned on, but you can see the grind map, okay? So I've got the grind map laid out correctly in three and two, supposedly, but if you go back to two, Max is two where Unity's one, it's all broken up. And that's because Unity used it for, um, for your baking, your uh, light maps. So I'm gonna come back in here, go to materials, put my tech crate back on right here. So now I've got this tech crate material and what I need to do is put that grime layer over top of it. So how do I do that? Well, I can't do it with this HDRP lid. So this is the cool thing. I'm showing you three different types. Lid is the standard and then there's decal to put things on top of it. But I'm going to come in here and go and change this lid, HDRP, to lit layer or layered lit like that. And it looks like I did it already, so let me get rid of some of this stuff here. I want you to see what I'm talking about here. Okay. I'm not going to worry about layer count at this point because there's just two. By default, there's two. We only need two because we're going to add the second layers over there. And then I'm not going to worry about um, any of this stuff. I'm not actually, I've seen it done where you can drag your material in here or not. And by funny enough, if you look down here, you'll see that my main layer, which is this first layer, has the base material set up, but you don't see it, right? Well, that's because um, this is technically on top of 
the uh, main layer. So if I change this to green, you see it's green. Okay. So how do we get this to work? What's the deal? I don't have a mask map for this either, and that would be helpful too for this one. I'm just doing this by default here. So this is how we opened up if we did it by default. So what I'm going to do is in this surface inputs, I'm going to change my grind base to this one. And now suddenly I get that color in there. But the problem is it's unwrapped like we saw for uh, UV channel 1 in Max for UV. UV channel over here. So I'm going to change that to UV channel 2 or UV channel 3. UV channel 2 we know is now being used by the, uh, the bait light map setup. So we're going to go to UV channel 3 and there we go. Now we're still seeing shadow, we're still seeing the no opacity, but if we look at this texture, just to make sure you understand, click in preview, you can go to the alpha and there's the alpha. So the alpha is there, it's just not being shown right now. So how do we fix that? Well, let's get the other textures in there real quick too. I'm gonna grab this height map, I'm gonna throw it in there. Actually, we'll wait on the height map. We'll just put the normal map in there, and bam. And I'm gonna change this back to one. And then I'm gonna take these and turn them way down. So there's no specky and stuff like that. But we can kind of see it, but you really, you know, it's hard to see what's going on. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to come back up to, funny enough, the sub area which is above the main layer in here. And we're gonna say main layer influence for sure. So there's one. And then we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say, come back to that one. And then we're gonna come down to here and we're gonna say opacity map or as density map. So if I click on this button, it turns all the way down first. So this means, I'll get back to that in a second, but I'll turn this on. And now suddenly we see the alpha map from this texture blending through here. Okay, so one of the things we did when we turned that first button up here, oops, let me hide some of this stuff so we don't get that confused. Um, when I click this button up here, main fluent influence for main layer, is it allows me to come in here and blend in some of the main texture colors too. You can see that it's blending in some across, it means that at zero, it means it's just completely this texture on top and then you can blend it in. And then normal influence, you can pull it back a little bit and all that stuff too. Um, I'm probably gonna pull that normal back a little bit too. And a mass map would really help because my spec is kind of weird on my uh, highlights. So I'll just do a little bit here. There we go. So we're getting the slime on the sides. Notice that it's not on top and that's because I didn't actually unwrap the top and, and it's using a separate material on top here. So it's a little bit different. Okay, so the last thing you need to look at, well, one of the last things you need to look at is um, coming back up here and saying use height as a blend and then focus for having this height map. And these are really fast maps, so really taking time to do these right would be helpful. Turn this on and now you'll see back up here at the top where I have height transition, this is, I can actually fade in a little bit, I have a little bit more control over the fade in. And the more detail you put into the height map, the better. But now I have a layer on top of a layer that actually builds grime into it. And the cool thing is you can have up to four of these that build on top of each other. Okay, and there's more little things you can do. There's another way you can do it. So each layer has its own mask, own opacity mask type thing. You can also come in here and say things you can add to it um, entirely, of course. So if I wanted to have more of it, I could go two in one direction, and now I've got that. So you know, or I could say point five, maybe. You know, so it's a little bit shallower than go all the way up like that. And we'll say one point five. So it's a little bit more tight. Okay. And there we go, like that. Um, there's a little bit of other things you can do too, but at this point I do want to point out a couple of things that are flawed with it. It's not overlapping the emissive channels. I haven't looked into it, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. But just to give you an idea, that's how we would do mountains and stuff, right? That's how we, we throw these second layers with second textures or we use decals. There's two ways of looking at it. <clears throat> and there's tons of ways we saw it in the other, um, we saw it in the Doom video where they just kind of slid things on there. Those are just layers on top of the channels, probably using channels to define how they're laid out. Or they could just be doing it within the tool, but it's the same kind of thing that we're trying to do here. Anyway, 
Anyway, that's it. That's the last piece for this class. And we'll see you in the next time.